Today we're going to build some terrain for our nature scene and I hope you enjoy it. This is the first episode of the series. This animation that I worked on here is an example of what we'll be making in this video series. I'll be going over how to use Terraform effects, just the basics of it to build up some land in this tutorial and future ones. I'll show how to use Teo to create trees and grass. I'll also show how I made this water. So I hope you really enjoy this series and if you like it, please hit like and subscribe. So where I'll get started is clicking Insidium and going over Terraform FX and clicking right here, Terraform Terrain. And you'll see we get the, the default Terraform Terrain in here. It already has some noise, thermal weathering, and hydraulic erosion applied to it by default. We're going to build our own, so I'm going to delete these and just start with a nice blank slate here. If I click on Terraform Terrain, I'm going to move this up a little bit. We can see under Add Operator, Generators we can add and Filters. I'm going to mostly focus on generators for today. I'm going to click on the Terraform Grid and you'll see we have all of these dots down here and this will give us control over the shape of our land. There's an option to use a brush to move these. And right now we don't have airbrush on, so I can push and pull these individually. If I decide to turn on airbrush mode to elevate, this will allow us to draw a crosshair and the longer I hold down the mouse tool, you'll see the more the land becomes elevated. So this is pretty cool. It looks like we've made an island. And if you're wondering where these colors are coming from, if you look under your object tag under Terraform Terrain, you'll see this really cool um, spectrum here and you'll see that the lower parts of the land are blue and then they go up from there. You can choose different presets. You can customize them. There's some pretty cool ones in here. Um, I'll just keep it on Alpine for now. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what the grid allows you to do. You can also use a gradient to change the surface of the land. And you can find that under Add Operator and use a gradient. But in this case, I like the grid because I feel like it gives me more control. And what I'll actually do is set this back to how it was before because what I'm thinking of doing is creating a piece of land where there's water in the front and then in the back it'll be a prairie. I want to create some prairie grass back here and I'm going to use Teo to do that. I'm just using Terraform to create the basic form that I'm going to be adding plants and trees to. So that'll be really fun to do. So if I go into this brush, I'm just going to elevate up this area here. Okay. 
If I go into Object Settings, I can increase the X dimensions, increase the Z dimensions, can really change the size, make it however big I want this piece of land to be. This is looking nice to me right now. So I feel like the water is starting at a little bit of a low point. I want this to be up a little bit higher because I'm thinking that I might create some water later. So this is just going to be what shows through that water material, but I want that blue to be up maybe a little bit more. So under object, if I'd like to, I can slide these up so that we get a little bit more blue. That's looking better to me. And I don't think I'm going to be needing these mountainous colors because we're just going to put some prairie grass there. Um, if anything, I'd like this to be more brown so we have a little bit more mud and dirt in here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to actually move these up a little bit, move these knots down. This is starting to look good to me, like a nice gradient. Okay, so that's our basic land. Um, something else we can do is we can add another operator. And this one I think is the most fun to add in some noise. And now look at that gorgeous texture. Just just adding that adds so so much to this. It adds a lot of nice deformation and it's looking good. There's different types of noise you can choose. Displaced turbulence, wavy turbulence. The wavy turbulence makes this look a little bit more rocky. You can also choose how many octaves are in your turbulence. So the more octaves, the more detailed the turbulence will be. The less, the less detailed it will be, the smoother it'll be. So I'll increase this a little bit so we get a little bit more detail. You can also translate this back and forth. You can move the turbulence by X, Y, and in the Z direction. I'm going to set these back to zero for right now. You can also mask where your noise is showing up. You can enable by altitude. And you can choose to only have the turbulence start up 
higher. So as you can see, our lower altitude where our water begins, there is no, no noise down there. But up higher, we have the noise, so we can adjust the min and the max. We can also choose to soften that, so if we don't want there to be such an abrupt change, we can soften it a little bit. And now we have this nice smooth transition from the noise to the water area. You can also control the masking by slope. So here you can see that the steepest part of our land has zero noise added to it. And then where there is less slope, there is more noise. And you can adjust the min and max as well as the softening to control that mask. For right now, I like how this is looking so I'll just keep the altitude mask on. I like how that looks. I also think that the water would help smooth out the land a little bit. It would, it would, I mean, this is going to be a muddy area, so as that mud gets wet, it's going to smooth out, so it makes sense to have it get smoother as the altitude changes, in my mind. And while you're working on your project, you may want to reference some real nature scenes. I think it makes it easier to do that sometimes. So most of this is going to actually be covered up by trees and grass, so I'm not going to concern myself too much if the noise is perfect. And this is a, a really great start. The only thing I might do is I'll make this a little bit bigger. so that we can imagine it going off into the distance a little, a little bit more. So this is looking pretty good. So this is going to be the base for when we add trees and grass. I'm also thinking I'd like to make a big willow tree. Um, willow trees are near water usually and they're just so beautiful. And we'll simulate some wind in here. It's going to look good. This is just the first episode, so stay tuned for us working in Teo as well. It'll be a lot of fun. Up to you, just in case. If you don't already know, you can see a preview of your noise within the preview tab under your noise. And you can choose to see it by altitude, by slope, or by a field's mask. So if you wanted to, in theory, you could go ahead and add in a map in um, a field in order to mask this out. So if you want to add in a mask with a field, let's look up field here, and we'll see all these different options. And by the way, the way that I pulled up this list is shift C. So if you ever forget where a button is, this is a great way to find it. <laughs> I mean, I use it all the time because it's easier than going up and looking for tools. I'm going to choose a spherical field just as an example. So now we have this spherical field in here. I'm going to scale it up and you'll see that only the noise will only show up where the spherical field is. So you can choose whatever kind of field you'd like. You can use a linear field and this will let you control the deformation of your land. 
This is also an option in other operators, so you can use it there. I'm going to delete this spherical field because I don't really think I need it. Um, you can also see a preview of your, your grid deformation. So I'm going to turn off the noise for right now, but you can see the shape that we've created there in black and white. You can choose altitude, you can choose slope, you can choose a field's mask again, like what we did earlier with the noise. I'm not going to do that for right now. You can also um, you can also adjust the seed. So let's say we have this noise here and we don't like it. We can choose another seed in order to change it. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And the next episode, which comes out tomorrow, I'm releasing one each day for this series. Um, the one that comes out tomorrow will be on how to 3D model and create prairie grass using Insidium's Teo inside of Cinema 4D. So please stay tuned for that. Let me know if you have any questions about what I went over today. And feel free to comment below. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.